In this video, we're going to take a look at parametric surfaces. Now, the reason we're going to look at this is go back to uh, one of the first sections in this chapter. We were looking at line integrals over scalar functions, and that had to turn into something like this, um, where C was a parametric curve. C was parameterized by x of t, y of t, z of t. You see that appear here, 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 as well as the derivatives of x, y, and z. Um, and even the, the starting and ending t values of a and b show up here and here. And we needed all this in order to just compute one of these line integrals. Um, of course, there's a version of this which just has x of y, z, uh, f, f of x, y, and you can just drop the z of t and this dz, dt. And that's what an earlier video showed. So there was this curve in black that waves back and forth here called c parameterized by x of t and y of t. And so there was a similar looking formula for a function of two inputs. Um, first, one of the key reasons to parameterize surfaces is because it's useful in its own right. But in this class, it's useful because we're going to now take a look at integrating a function of three inputs. Here we had two or three inputs. But now truly three inputs, a function of three inputs. And now we're going to pick up all of the values of this function. Um, which are on a surface. So just like earlier, we picked up the values of a two input function along some curve. <clears throat> now in three dimensional space, we're going to pick up all the values of f along um, this two dimensional thing. Uh, uh, the surface is sort of like a sheet in nature. It's a two dimensional object. And we have to parameterize. However, if you just use one parameter, t, then you're going to get a curve. And in order to parameterize a surface, you're going to need two parametric variables or two parameters. So instead of t, we'll use u and v. Um, the app that we're going to use alongside this, you can uh, take a look at right here. Um, and we're going to run through 10 examples real quick. The first example is x of u, v is v cosine u, y is v sine u, and z is v plus a third sine 3v minus 4. And here are starting and ending u and v values. So let's go to the app. And here's the object that you get. You can spin this around to take a look. And um, what is this? It's more or less a cone, except you see the sort of ripply nature along the sides. And that's due to the sine of 3v over 3. Um, you can see in blue all of the points which have a certain fixed u value. In this case, u is equal to 1.25. So if you want to see all of uh, what you can actually do is take the number 1.25, plug in for all of the u's that you see everywhere. And then if you just replace all the v's with a t, you're actually looking at a parametric curve where t would be the parameter in three dimensional space. But if instead you look at v being a fixed value, and you let u range in this example between 0 and 2 pi, then you see the circle. And I hope that makes sense too. So if you just go ahead and plug in 6.35 for all the v's right there, 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 and there, at least in the x and y coordinates, what you should see is, uh, well, 6 cosine u and 6 sine u. So if you just think of the u as being theta from polar or cylindrical coordinates, that's the circle right here of radius 6.35. And if I just go ahead and change the value of the slider, you'll see now all the points where v is 7.85. And you'll actually see that the change for the circle's radius and the points you're picking up is not completely gradual. That'll be a later example. And that's, again, due to the sine of 3v over 3. The second example is related. Oh, here's just another notation, excuse me. Um, you can use a vector function format to describe x, y, and z. But the second example is just going to remove this minus 4 right there. And so let's just go back to the app and just remove this minus 4 right here. And it's it'll do what you expect it to do. The whole picture will raise up 4 units because we just removed a minus 4 on the z formula. So this is really all the same, basically. You can move around the u value. Think of u here as sort of being like theta from cylindrical coordinates. And so there's u being a very tiny angle. So that's why you're getting all the points that are close to the positive x-axis. And changing values of v, you know, again, like here's where v is 4.1. So all the points there correspond to when v is equal to 4.1. And th that so this red uh, curve could be thought of as a parametric curve, although this is called the grid curve for a fixed v value. The third example is quite similar. We're just going to now remove that other term. And this will be a quite familiar object if we just make the formula for z just have the v. And now this really truly is a cone. okay? And so if you pick 
pick a specific value of v, like let's pick five, five-ish that is, then you have five cosine theta, five sine theta, and five. So you see that the radius of the circle you're looking at is the same as the height of the points you're looking at. So here you have a height of five, and so this radius out here is also five, and if you change the value of v, you know, just try this, you know, try this on your own. Um, now I've changed v to be about 2.5, so we're looking at x is 2.5 cosine t, y is 2.5 sine t, and z is 2.5, so it makes sense that those are the only points you'll get. Um, t, or in this case u, you're just letting those values vary. And you can actually even see where the blue and the red cross, that's the one and only one point you get when u is equal to 0.15 and when v is equal to 2.45. So I hope as I move this u value around and scroll, you can see those grid curves and those seem to make sense. The next example is quite similar. We're just going to uh, change v to a square root v for this z formula, so sqrt v. And <clears throat> I hope this makes sense as far as what you're getting. The points that you used to have along this cone along here have now moved down and the amount they've moved depends on the value of V. So you actually have this sort of uh, outward widely shaped bowl like thing and you actually have uh, very close to the origin over here you have this cusp. Um, the next example is quite similar. We're just gonna change uh, Z to have V squared as a formula. And so what you actually have is a parabola, uh, parabola that's spinning around, so a paraboloid. And so you can see what happens here with different values of V again. Now the, the V happens to be the radius of the circle, but is no longer the height of the point. I mean, the height of the point is, well, quite literally V squared from the formula. And you can see what happens for different values of U as well. The next example... Um, makes a very tiny change and all, all this is is the previous example with a 2 in the old formula for x. So this, I hope quite naturally, you make a guess for what's going to happen here, but by putting a 2 here and pressing enter, the x value should stretch out by a factor of 2. So let's see that happen geometrically. And there you have it. Okay. Um, now you no longer quite corresponds to the angle because of the stretching that has occurred and think about the same thing uh, you do when you parameterize an ellipse um, in the plane uh, theta no longer keeps or t no longer keeps the idea of being theta and I think we're now going to leave these examples um, so here's something that's fundamentally different from the previous example so we'll try to remember 3 cosine u v and 3 sine u so 3 cosine u I already forget v here and for the z we have three sine u and um, we, we're going to take u to go from 0 to 2 pi and v to go from negative 3 to 3 so 0 to 2 pi for u and then negative 3 to 3. Now this example may seem a little bit weird um, but if you look in just the xz plane, you've got a 3 cosine theta, 3 sine theta. So forget the y coordinate for a second. If you just look in the xz plane, what you ought to see is a circle of radius 3. And so I hope, let's see if we can get that to happen. Yep, there we go. There's the x-axis, there's a z-axis. Um, you see a circle of radius 3 from, from this point of view. And then what happens in the y coordinate? Well, y is just the value of v, so this is a separate independent parameter that does not depend on u. And v just happens to go from negative 3 to 3. And so you can see what happens for various values of v. The v value is the same as the, the y value. Maybe it was a mistake to pick 3 to be the radius of the circle and have v go from negative 3 to 3. So let's try negative 4. Oh, I don't know, to positive uh, 5. Right? So you see, you know, with each update, the little extension that occurred there. And so when v is equal to negative 4, that's this furthest away from a circle because the positive y-axis is right here pointing at us. And so the, the circle nearest us, if I can get this slider to go, well, it's not going to go. But if, this, if I could get the slider to move, then the red circle that's closest to us uh, would be the circle v is equal to 5. Um, the next example... 
um, is actually one very reminiscent of spherical coordinates. So just think of all the u's as being phi's and all the v's as being thetas and what you would have here would be sort of, uh, well, rho would be fixed to be five and you're ranging phi values between zero and pi and theta values between zero and two pi. What, really, what we really should get here is all of the points in a sphere of radius five. So let's try uh, writing this in, so five sine of u cosine of v, I don't know if it needs parentheses or not, okay. Um, five sine of u sine of v, and then over here we're gonna need five cosine of u. We'll get the standard value. So what, what's happening right now is I, I believe that the this sort of watermelon-like look is because the computer's a little confused and drawing on top of itself, we need the right values here. u goes from zero to pi, and v goes from, v's are, are theta, so v goes from zero to two pi. And so now what you get is, is exactly one, uh, each, each point is represented exactly once. So um, v representing the theta value, you can see uh, since v is zero, those are all the points right along the positive x-axis the points that project anyway to the po positive x-axis. And as v moves around, well, that, that's fixed values of theta. And we'll scroll around to the back side of that sphere. And then uh, what about u? Well, u was the phi coordinate in spherical coordinates. So because currently u is set to pi, that should be just the point at the bottom of the sphere. So I don't think the computer is doing a great job of highlighting that point. But as soon as we start to move u to be smaller, you should see all of these these uh, circles um, which serve as like uh, the equator and so on in a sphere and so on. Okay. Um, the next example we'll look at is actually one quite reminiscent of um, an earlier idea. So we're gonna we're gonna take a look at. Um, something that comes from thinking about line segments. So uh, here's a parameterization of a line segment in the plane. So this is the line segment that starts at 1, 2 and ends at, well, 1 plus 2 comma 2 plus 3. Um, but there is another way to view this line segment, right? You can also just say this is starting at 1 comma 2 and moving in the direction of the vector 2 comma 3 and moving that full length of that vector. That's sort of a nice way to view and this is a nice complete analogy, this 1 plus 2t, so 1 plus 2u and three, 2 plus 3t, 2 plus 3u. It's just now that, now here we have um, moving along the direction 2, 3, negative 4 and moving along the direction 1, negative 4, 5, depending on whether you, you want v to advance or u to advance. So think of this as starting at the point 1, 2, 3 and moving in the direction of this vector, 2, 3, negative 4, and the vector 1, negative 4, 5. So think about what object that ought to be. See if you can make a, before I type this all in, see if you can make a prediction of what this looks like. Okay, let me type this in. 1 plus 2u plus v. 1 plus 2u, oops, 2u plus v. Um, uh, 2 plus 3u minus 4v. 2 plus 3u minus 4v. So don't mind the picture yet. I mean, there's a waviness to it because I haven't changed the z formula, although that does look kind of cool. Uh, the z formula is 3 minus 4u plus 5v. 3 minus 4u plus 5v. And then we should get the, the bounds for u and v correct. Those are both going to go from 0 to 1. So I just got to change that. I need to change this. Um, so actually, let's get this sort of situated, right? There's the positive x-axis, positive y-axis, positive z-axis. And what, what we're actually looking at sort of looks like a square, but this is actually a parallelogram. So let's take a look at when u is 0 and when v is 0. Well, if you look at this, all these formulas, if u is 0 and v is 0, you just get 1, 2, 3. So right where the red and the blue meet along these edges, that point right there ought to be 1, 2, 3. I don't know if I can convince you of that by rotating around for a little while or something. Um, okay, there we go. We have all the positive axes facing us. And as you change the value of u gradually, if nothing happens with the v, well, then you have a parameterization, you know, 1 plus 2t, 2, 2 plus 3t, 3, 3 minus 4t, and see if you get the points that you think you ought to, although here you're getting many points because all the different points here 
in blue correspond to different values of v, and you can do the same thing with v. So let me just sort of pick a random, random value. So I've, I have 0.7 for u and 0.5 for v. That what that's trying to say, so the 0.7 for u, let me go back to the slide, is saying start at 1, 2, 3 and move 0.7 the way of this vector. And then the fact that v is 0.5 means move halfway along this vector. Okay, last example. Let's let x be u, y be v, and z will be sine of two, uh, u plus 2v plus 6. Oh, that's a mouthful. So uh, x is just simply u, y is simply v. Um, the z formula, I forget, sine of sine of u plus 2v. I already forget. Let's just get that typed in. Oh, plus a 6. And if I remember right, negative 10 to 10 for both u and v. So let's get that because there's too little of this picture right now. So negative 10 to 10 to 10. And get this to say negative 10. Okay, so this is quite quite the quite the surface in yellow and you see um, for a fixed u value you see what looks like a sine curve let me see if I can sort of from this way you can see that blue sine curve and you actually see uh, from this way you see a sine curve as well although the period is bigger and well take a look at what's going on right for a fixed u or for a fixed v you can see that the period ought to be different um, and what is another way to view this well we're using x to literally be the same as u and y to literally be the same as v, so you could use those parameters u and v, but really what we're doing is if x is just u and y is just v, you can replace the u and v there. And what we're staring at in yellow is actually just this parameterized surface really just is the graph of a, of a function. It's just z is equal to sine of x plus 2y plus 6, right? So this is just the graph of a function f of two inputs. And so you might as well think of instead of this parameterization using the standard variables of u and v, you might as well just call x and y the parametric variables.